Right, hello, I'm James Andrews, reporter with Food Safety News. I'm here at IFP 2014, and I've got Emily Broad-Lieb with me, your lecturer of law at uh, Harvard University. You're here to talk about food waste and expiration dates and um, how things like confusion around Best Buy dates uh, can lead to uh, or can exacerbate the problem of food waste. So I'm hoping you can kind of uh, just give me an overview of the food waste problem in America right now. Sure. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be talking about this. Um, so food waste is becoming a really big issue, both in the U.S. and internationally. Just to give some some data, uh, estimates have said that we're wasting about 40% of the food in the United States that we produce. So nearly half of the food we're producing, and about uh, 1.3 billion um, tons of food worldwide, according to the FAO recent report. Um, and so this, you know, it's a lot of food. It's a lot of, of uh, impact on the environment. We put so much water and fuel and resources into producing that food. 25% of our water supply goes to produce food that we then throw away, which is crazy. And then it's a lot for, in terms of the economics for consumers, when we have 15% uh, of households food insecure and people are throwing away over $2,000 worth of food per household each year. Um, how do... Uh Best Buy dates and expiration dates factor into this. Um, and also, could you tell us, um, is there a difference legally between a Best Buy date and an expiration date? Well, it's been interesting doing this work. Um, what we found was that it, as concern over food waste is rising, every entity that looked at the issue of food waste from the United Nations to the FAO uh, to um, national governments, other nonprofit organizations have said, we need to figure out what's going on with expiration dates because they're causing so much waste. So we, we took on that challenge. We released a report last year with the Harvard Food Law and Policy Clinic, which I direct um, in partnership with the Natural Resources Defense Council. And we really took on the task of, of understanding the legal regime in the U.S. around those dates. And what we found is there's actually no legal difference between all those different dates you see on food, best buy, sell by, use by, um, and they're actually not regulated at the federal level at all. States are regulating them um, in many cases in ways that are um, not based on, on safety at all. And so in fact, a lot of the, the decisions about what labels to put on food come from manufacturers and they're really just a, an estimate of quality, of peak quality. And so what can we do about this? I mean, we see some solutions prop, cropping up in uh, Europe, like in France with the, um, what do we call it? <laughs> Yeah, with the inglorious, uh, the inglorious fruits and vegetables, uh, where um, grocery stores will sell f ugly or misshapen fruits and vegetables at like a thirty percent discount, and now the Trader Joe's, uh, a former executive of Trader Joe's, is starting a new grocery chain that will sell foods that are past their Best Buy dates. Um, what sort of solutions are out there to solve this problem of food waste? Well, this has been an area we're really um, concerned about and working in. Um, I think there's, I'd like to give like two categories, I guess. The first really ties specifically to the expiration dates. Um, you know, I think the fact that we, we have right now, it looks like to consumers there's a system, they see these dates, a lot of people think those are related to safety. We would really like to change that system and standardize it so that there's really like a, a coherent, reliable system. And for the the bulk of foods where that's really a quality date, let's let people know that. Let's use one standard label on those foods so that people can make better decisions so that um, stores like the Daily Table, which Doug Rao from Trader Joe's is starting, or others can use those foods, sell them, you know, close to or past that date, and people know this isn't a safety issue. If I can get these at a good price, let me get them at a good price. Um, and then for the small, small category of foods where a date actually can have some impact on safety, let's just be more clear about that. And we spent a lot of time here um, speaking about this issue and the fact that there is a small amount of safety risk, but we're not communicating that to consumers. They don't know which foods actually that matters. So that's sort of specific to the dates. Um, and then more broadly around around reducing food waste, I think there's a lot of opportunities. Um, one of the first things is really getting better data in the U.S. and and monitoring where we are, so that when we we release new initiatives or innovations like the ones you've mentioned, we can really monitor are they making an impact. Um, 
And, and consumer education is a huge piece of that. We know that some, some foods are more sensitive to ex the problem of expiration dates. Um, foods do expire and there are safety risks. But other foods, you know, the best by date doesn't necessarily mean as much. I was wondering if you could talk about which foods are more sensitive to that you should be more careful about when they've gone past their expiration dates versus what sorts of foods you might not be able, might not need to worry about as much. Uh, great question. Um, really, the the category of foods. I'll start by saying that there's not been a single instance of foodborne illness linked with someone eating a food after a date. So the the dates really aren't a safety issue. And and government. I mean, FDA has even said the reason they don't regulate the dates is because they're completely not linked to safety. The, the small class of foods where, where the date could have a safety, um, just not even a risk, but that they could prevent some foodborne illness would be in the case of foods that have a listeria risk. So this would be foods that already are contaminated with listeria, but because it can grow while under refrigeration, keeping them in your refrigerator longer allows it to multiply. So it's very small. It's foods like deli meats, deli salads, um, some cheeses, uh, a lot of the foods that you hear being... Um, uh, the pregnant women, for example, are discouraged from eating because of listeria risk. Those are the main ones. Um, and I think really we, we could make this very short list and then mark those foods with a label like use by or expires on or, you know, um, something that's really more clear that's tied to safety. And for the, all the other foods, um, I, I'd say particularly we see labels now on cereal and canned goods and, and vinegar and bottled water, all these things that don't really go bad or that don't go bad for a really long time. And, and I think that those should bear a label that's something more like fresh as before that people will really understand. What about the issue of donating to food banks and food donation? Are there certain problems with people being able to donate food that's still technically good, but the label says that it's gone past its best by date? Yeah. Well, what we found in our research, one of the biggest components of our research was actually looking at the state laws around expiration dates. And in the absence of federal regulation, states have created a real patchwork of laws. So like Massachusetts, my home state, um, is one of the strictest in terms of requiring dates on a lot of foods and then making it really difficult to sell or donate that food. Um, after that date, even though the date isn't linked with safety. Um, so what we found, just to give like a little snapshot, um, 41 states require labels on some foods, but states like New York don't require date labels on any food, which is a big state. Um, you know, no one's suffering from, from, from outbreaks uh, due to that. Um, and then 20 states restrict the sale or donation of those foods. And in those states, it is really complicated and difficult for food banks, food pantries to use those foods after those dates. But what I've found from, from talking with colleagues um, at food banks and at Feeding America is that even in the states where legally you are allowed to donate those food after those dates, there's so much confusion at the food bank level and then at the individual level and people think that they're getting unsafe food and they get really outraged about it. Um, so I think it, it the dates what we found when we first started doing this research, people thought, well, if food expires, it will be going to the food banks and it's great, we'll be feed, you know, keeping it in the food stream. But in fact, a lot of that food does end up getting wasted even at the food bank level because of either um, laws that don't make that much sense at the state level or because of this general lack of consumer understanding. So yesterday you were part of a panel that was discussing food, uh, food expiration date labeling issues and uh, there were, for example, there was someone from Walmart on the panel. I'm just wondering if you could give us an overview of what you all talked about at that panel. Yeah. So I was uh, part of a really great roundtable. I was thrilled to be part of it. Um, as you said, um, we had someone from Walmart, from the Food Marketing Institute, from the FDA, Feeding America, um, uh, and, and you know other kind of academic and consumer organizations. And it was really exciting because what we found from this roundtable was we're all approaching a place where we're, we're sort of, I think, coalescing around the, the first, the idea that we need to we need a solution to this issue. We need to find a way to standardize these labels, both to help reduce waste, to reduce consumer confusion, and increase safety in those small number of cases. Um, and I think there's details still to work out, but but it was exciting to see that from all of these perspectives, we're, we're coming together around what the details are. And I don't know what the next steps will be, but I'm hoping to be able to continue working with that group. What about other solutions beyond expiration dates that we can apply to trying to solve the problem of food waste in general? 
you know, there's so much that we, we can make progress on in this country. Um, as you alluded to before, there's been campaigns and initiatives all over the world. We're really behind in the U.S. Uh, a few areas that I, I want to highlight, I think one is really, uh, we have some really strong liability protections in the U.S., um, and we're, we're ahead of other countries in that place, but still 50% of food manufacturers and 67% of retailers and wholesalers have said that they don't donate their foods because they're afraid of liability issues. So we have a, a lot of progress to make on both educating people about those protections and then we're doing some work now trying to figure out what are the gaps in those protections. How can we make them a little more comprehensive to still protect food safety, but then also make sure that we're, we're trying to keep food in the food stream as much as we can. Similar to that, we're doing work around the tax incentives. Um, there's a lot of progress we can make on, on making it financially viable for companies to donate food as just there's, there's sort of there's changes we can be making um, in terms of the donors, in terms of donees, you know, who's allowed to donate, who's allowed to receive that food and, and, and pass the tax incentive up. Uh, as one example, um, some other countries like France actually uh, also provide a, uh, a tax incentive to um, offset the cost of transportation and storage of food, which we don't do in the U.S. So there's a lot of, of room there. I think lastly would just be there's a huge opportunity for technological solutions at all levels. I mean, um, on the packaging of food itself, there's there could be smart packaging, smart labels that change color when the food is bad or if it you know has been time or temperature abused, um, which will allow people to keep things longer. Uh, and then also just in terms of um, identifying some of this food that's going to waste and finding ways to use it through social enterprise, through innovation, I think there's really good opportunities. And from the legal side, we're trying to find ways that we can foster that. Excellent. Well, this has been, re this has been a really interesting discussion, uh, really exciting ideas, and hopefully we can see less food waste in the future. So thank you for, thank thank you you. for joining me. Yeah.